Another component that we can analyze now that we know Faraday's law, magnetic flux, and so on, on top of the inductor, we can also like, analyze the behavior of this component called a transformer. Now these aren't robots in disguise. What a transformer does, it basically works like this. You have some kind of source where the voltage isn't just a standard voltage, it has a changing voltage all the time because what that does is it drives some kind of changing current over time. And so if you have a coil in this circuit, if you have changing current, you're going to make some kind of change in magnetic flux over time. And then this magnetic flux, we can wind this winding around some kind of iron core, usually. And these magnetic fields will get channeled around this iron core because the susceptibility is so much higher. And then what we can do then is to wind another set of coil around the same magnetic core so that I can pick up this change in magnetic flux in order to induce an EMF and therefore current around the second part of the circuit and drive some kind of load way out here. Now you may ask, why do such complicated things? Why do we have to drive an electric circuit which creates a magnetic field which then gets transferred to this iron core and then it gets picked up by this other electric circuit? I mean, it's kind of cool that, you know, this resistor isn't exactly connected at all electronically to the source but then it still gets the power from the source. But what's cool here is the number of coils in these windings, they don't have to be the same. And based on the number of coils or turns, the actual induced DMF doesn't have to be the same voltage as the voltage used to create the magnetic flux in the first place. So this gives us a very easy way to change the voltage, which in this case we make use of to use our 110 volts alternating current coming out from the wall and step it up, increase the voltage to a much higher voltage, which we need for my gas discharge tube in this case. Or many a times when you run electronics, you want to reduce the voltage so you don't burn out the electronics that are inside. Now I do have to mention here that when we talk about my voltage source, it has to be an AC source. Because the key here is it's not that we have voltage, it's that we have a change in voltage all the time. Of course you can do funny things like triangle functions and whatnot, but most obviously we would want to use a sine function, which is an AC that changes all the time so that the current can change all the time, which allows this to be changing all the time to induce my EMF. Because again, it's not the flux that creates the current, it's a change in flux that creates the current. If that's met, then the relationship between my input or primary voltage and my secondary voltage, it's actually very simple. You can go through all the whole derivation yourself in the textbook, but this is the end result. The ratio of the turns will give you the ratio of the voltages. In this case, we're told that we have V2 of 5 kilovolts, quite large. So then we can then find out this ratio simply by comparing my two primary and secondary voltages. So we know that N1 over N2 is simply V1 over V2 rearranging. So we can say that N1 is simply 0.022 N2. There's a lot more turns in the secondary in order to step up my voltage. Though Oftentimes, we like to re-express this with numbers greater than 1, so we swap it on the other side and say 
that n2 is actually about 45 times the number of turns is n1 and um, by convention we use the primary double dot secondary to do a ratio and that's part A for part B they want the current this RMS thing don't worry too much about it uh, it's just something with related to AC your Ohm's law still work basically the same way even in AC so then to work out the current we can use our power well the power in the secondary part is simply V times I right we know V we know I so in order to find out I we just divide through right because we're given the power and we're given the voltage so we have 75 watts divided by 5,000 volts and that's your secondary part I2 now to relate back to the initial part the thing about transformer is whatever power is used up by the secondary must be supplied by the primary because conservation of energy of course this is assuming a hundred percent efficiency and most transformers are fairly good with that you get some leakage of like magnetic fields around there and things but for most part we're just going to assume that it's near 100% efficiency so again I1 is going to be P1 over V1 which as we know it's going to be the same power but divided by a totally different voltage 6818 amps and then for part C they want the effective resistance seen so resistance again is just V over I and they because of the way the transformer changes the current and the voltage the ratio is going to end up being different so instead of whatever this R is it has changed slightly to be 161 ohms so the math itself is actually quite simple no integration not even sines and cosine but the application is very useful and in fact it's one of the key idea why we have not only AC power generation but AC power transmission because ideally we want to transmit power with very little loss and we can achieve that at very high voltages but to change the voltage it is much easier to do so in AC because we can construct a device like the transformer and based on the continuously changing voltage and current we can step up or step down that voltage very very easily